Well, friends, it's good to be back. Uh, it was good to be gone, but it's really good to be back. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of astonishing that it's actually been five weeks since I've stood on this stage, uh, which is a little mind-blowing. Um, you know, if you remember, a number of weeks ago, Reverend Sunshine, Michelle and I from Oakland Center for Spiritual Living, we did a pulpit swap. I was in Oakland, Reverend Sunshine was here. Then the following weekend, we marched in pride as a community. And then in that month of conversation of self-care, Elisha got sick. <laughs> and instead of being here, I had to take care of me. Uh, and then I had a retreat planned, and then I was supposed to lead and facilitate a retreat and speak at a center in Oregon. Uh, and so, it turns out, five weeks I haven't been here. And now we're back together. So it's good to be home. <sighs> We've been up to a lot, y'all. So let's begin with a few breaths. Exhale first. Let's take a deep breath in. And let go. Another deep breath, breathe in, let go. One more collective breath, breathe in, and let it go. Mm. So within, uh, throughout all of the centers for spiritual living uh, across the globe in 2023, this is our year of living out loud. And each month, I know, right? That's big. We're calling it in. And each month we've been exploring different ways we're inviting us as individuals and as communities to live out loud. And this month, our topic, nationally, globally, is speaking truth to circumstance. Ooh. <laughs> um, which we're going to talk about today, but we're going to talk about it in a little way, in a little differently of a way than I think you are thinking. Um, speaking truth to circumstance. In New Thought, in Science of Mind, in Centers for Spiritual Living, we teach a philosophy that is called Science of Mind that was created by our founder, Ernest Holmes. And the core of that philosophy tells us that beneath, behind, around, within everything is a state of absolute divine perfection. Plato called it the idos. Plato said, you know, 300 BC, a few years ago, uh, Plato had this idea of the idos, that every single thing that exists has an ideal pattern. It has an ideal form. It has the perfect thought from which it then emerges into existence. And that there is an idos, there is an ideal pattern for each one of us, for our bodies, for the lives that we could live, for what our societies and communities could be, for the state of the earth itself. Everything has an ideal pattern and an ideal form. And then there's what shows up. <laughs> Which is that ideal pattern, that ideal form, those thoughts in the mind of God that trickle down through our collective and historical consciousness through our individual minds, and then become reality. So something happens between this state of divine perfection and what we experience. And it's somewhere in our mind or my mind that the stuff needs to get cleaned up. And I don't know if you've noticed, but if we look around at our nation, at our world, at all of the things that are unfolding around us, there is something between here and here <laughs> that we have got to deal with, right? And Ernest Holmes, Science of Mind, all of our New Thought teachers tell us, regardless of what you see in the world, look through it to a state of divine perfection, right? That if we get stuck on what we see, if we get stuck in the conditions, if we get stuck in the circumstances, our minds get stuck. And we can't see our way out from where we are. Our good old buddy Einstein will remind us every time we ask him, <laughs> you cannot reach a solution from the level of thinking that created it. 
right? Which means that when we see the problems, when we see the issues, when we see all that stuff that we think to needs to be fixed, we cannot solve it from the level of problem. And if we are a people who continuously look to the problems and the conditions of the world and just point at them and say, well, what do we do now? It's all going to hell. <laughs> and that's the story we tell, then that is what we get. And Ernest Holmes, Science of Mind, New Thought, I, we, all of us, need to remember that this philosophy is telling us to look for something deeper. Right? That even if it's those people who are trying to take our rights away or invade another country or harm or oppress someone else, we have to be able to develop a consciousness, a spiritual practice that allows us to look deep through what is showing up and say, even in them, even in, the, even in the abuser, even in the oppressor, even in the invader, there is a divine consciousness deep within them somewhere. Yeah. And if I meet them at the level of energy which they give me, if I hate them back, if I seek to harm them back, what am I going to get more of? I'm creating more hatred in the world. The high and holy call for all of us is to look to that person who is hating or oppressing you and look for God in them. Look for love. Look for their humanity. So that the you who you are, the life that you live, the way that you show up invites their humanity from them. Because that's the only way we're going to wake each other up. If we continue to push against that which is pushing against us, we're just going to get more pressure. But if we find a way to soften our own hearts, to allow the divine in the other into our hearts, we can then allow that to awaken within them because we are choosing to see it. Right? And if we ever want to rise above all of the issues that are in front of us right now, my friends, we have to be willing to look to a higher purpose. We have to believe in our vision of healing, in our vision of inclusion, in our vision of love more than they believe in the fear, in the oppression, in the separation, in all that's showing up. Right? And all of this stuff that's showing up in the world that looks like people placing their power over each other is truly fear inflated masquerading as power. Yes. Yeah. And what I know is that truth and love are way more powerful than fear. <laughs> and if we want to eradicate the fear and the separation and the harm-causing mentality that is plaguing our world, we have to be the people who are inviting each other up, yeah. right? To speak truth to what is showing up in front of us, to speak to those divine truths, to reach for the ideal forms, to remember that even if we can't see it now, there is something greater at work here. What looks like the end of days for a caterpillar is a birthing process for the butterfly, right? And uh, I got to have a, a wonderful um, uh, time uh, with my teacher, Jean Houston, while I was on my trip. And last Monday, I got to sit with her at her house, and we were having this dialogue about the evolution that's in front of us, about what is calling us forward. And we had this remarkable conversation about this idea that within the human being, within us as a society, those of us who are alive right now, there are latent potentials. There are ways of seeing, ways of being, new ideas, new perceptions we have not yet evolved to that are waiting within us. And she said, just like the imaginal cells in the caterpillar, we have to be mature enough, and it has to be the right season for those imaginal cells to be awakened within us. And I believe that we are a people who are choosing to do our spiritual work, to choose to wake up, to choose to look at ourselves, which means we're choosing to mature. And I believe that the conditions of the world are ripe and right, right now. It's the perfect season that the conditions around us are beginning to awaken that thing that is within us that is waiting to be brought forth into the world. And so what if everything 
that looks like what it that looks like what's not working? What if everything that is falling apart in front of us is actually the call to that which is within us, which has not yet been seen to emerge into the world? Yeah. Right? And I don't know if all of you know this, <laughs> but in the last year and a half, as this center has grown, as we've taken our stances and proudly, loudly speak to who we are and what we stand for, I've received a little bit of hate mail. Oh, oh no. <laughs> that was my first reaction. And then I realized, y'all, we are doing something right. <laughs> and I will tell you that some of these little letters that have come into my inbox or a few other things that have come my and our direction have lit a fire under me like you would not believe. Because what I realize is if we are getting that kind of attention, it's because we're making a ripple, we're making a change, we're standing for something. And if, and if, and if only the light and shiny people are seeing us, it means we're not shining our light into the darkness. Right? And when we shine our light into the darkness, guess what? All the creatures come out at night. You know? And it's like, you know what, and that's okay. Because I believe in something so powerful and so big and so strong and so magnificent that this light is shining into the world and we are waking each other up and we are standing for what is important. We are standing for what is true. We are making the changes we need to make for ourselves and guess what, people are noticing. Cool, right? <laughs> And I realize that as I see these things that are coming at me, I find myself getting so much more inspired to stand up taller, to speak louder, to speak truth to circumstance, to continuously preach what we are preaching, to tell everyone, guess what? You are God. Wake up. <laughs> right? Let us realize that we are the life of the earth. We are the life of the universe. There is no separation between anyone or anything. There is only one of us here. Could we remember that? For God's sake, could we remember that? Because once we do, all possibility is in front of us. Once we do, we can dispel all of this illusion that is in front of us and start to see the truth. And that's what we're here for. We are here to wake up, to look through all of the stuff that is showing up in our lives and in the world and continuously look through it to a deeper truth, to a greater awareness that there's something more at work here. I believe in evolution. Thank you. I believe in evolution. It's been at work for 14 billion years or something like that. I don't think it's going to drop us off here and ask us to figure it out for ourselves. We are going to continuously emerge towards the greater and towards the more. But every time evolution comes up against a bump, comes up against a place where it can't quite grow, things get difficult, things get crunchy, things get complicated, and then there's a jump and something new happens. So let us be the jump. Let us be the place where something new happens. Let us continue to grow and emerge into becoming a people who can see the truth beyond what shows up in front of us and see it so clearly that we pull it from the horizon and bring it into our experience. Take a deep breath and let it go. Take another deep breath in and let go. Together, one more deep breath and let go. And so as we breathe together, let us be reminded in this moment that each one of us is being breathed by something greater than ourselves. That in fact, the universe is alive that planet, Mother Earth, is alive. And that we are being breathed by these greater forces, these greater presences. I heard a quote recently that said, we are being lived by powers we pretend to understand. 
Let us remember that each one of us is being lived by something so much greater than we are, that there is indeed one seamless presence that is living and breathing throughout the entirety of the universe, and it is this one who is unfolding in, through, and as everyone, everything, every when, everywhere, all the time. God and only God is all that there is. And in this divine awareness and in this reality and this claiming of our truth, let each one of us remember that we are the place where the infinite, where the possible is funneling itself into actuality, where spirit is choosing reality through us, through our choices, through our intentions, through our attention and participation in life. We are creating. So let us choose what we are creating. Let us choose a higher reality. Let us choose to see and seek and be aware of a higher truth. Because what we know is that what we focus on, we will get more of. What we choose will be. So let us use the power of our awareness, our attention, and our choice to create what should be. And to bring about what could be. Because we know what is meant to be. And that is love. That is connection. That is our awareness of the interconnectedness of all of life. And so I am grateful in this moment to be part of this community, of this movement of thought that is bringing about waves of change into the world. And so let each one of us remember here and now that there is indeed a power for good in this universe that is so much greater than we are, and yet it is who we are. Let it move through us in everything we do, and let us live in service to life. And so I bless it as it is and as it is becoming. And I claim this as being good, and say with me, and so it is. Thank you, my friends.